me get started. I have a brief agenda of what we are going to look at. So F set, F uh, stands for faster or fast set. At least that's the idea. And um, I'm going to give uh, like a quick introduction uh, to uh, set functions. Uh, what is then like uh, replicated or like uh, impl re-implemented by F set. The current F set offering uh, with a quick demo of what it can do. Um, I'm going to also have a quick chat about how to approach the performance work in general that I thought it was maybe useful in this case. And um, a few things that I found by like trying to apply FSET in the wild in a few like uh, 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 largely used uh, open source projects and conclusions, of course. Um, so I, I'm not giving um, for granted that we know exactly uh, what closure set is um, and what are what it contains. Uh, so this is going to be a very quick introduction. And uh, as you might like in like uh, infer from the name, it contains uh, functions related to the set algebra. So it they not these functions normally take sets. They can also take other things, but that uh, is, uh, it can give surprising results. So we assume sets as the primar primary input for these functions. So you have things like union uh, that takes all uh, the elements uh, from two sets and creates a new set. Maybe I should also specify that a set is uh, an unordered collection of uh, non-duplicated elements as well. So when you unify them, if there are common elements between the two sets, they will not appear twice in the output. They will appear only once. Uh, the difference is uh, taking, uh, is removing all the elements from the second set from the first set and just returning the difference between the two. So very intuitive. Intersection is what is common between the two sets. Uh, a subset is uh, checking if the first set is, uh, all the elements in the first set are within inside the second set and the other way around the superset um, uh, checking if uh, everything that is in the first set is also in the second set. So no surprises there uh, but the closure dose set also contains something that is probably orthogonal well I mean it's related because it is something that is related to sets but it's building on top of sets with something a little bit more structured so it contains operations or another kind of algebra over uh, relations. So a relation, at least in the closure implementation, is a set of maps. Uh, not just a set of maps, but the maps inside the set all have the same set of keys. What can change is, of course, the values uh, within them. So you can see two examples that of users and accounts. Uh, those are both called relations. Um, and they can have as many uh, elements in them. And of course, given that they are set, those relations will have to be unique. They cannot repeat. So in a sense, you know, the, the relation uh, terminology here is calling into uh, relational databases is not like a coincidence. Relational algebra is at the basis of uh, relational databases. Um, the, uh, this like view of from closure is essentially um, uh, an in-memory view of a table, of a SQL table. And uh, similarly, uh, the closure.set namespace contains uh, operators that are remembering us of SQL um, uh, expressions. So for example, you can see here, I translated uh, select with a renaming of uh, one attribute from type to a type. And uh, from some specific relation users, uh, making a join onto like uh, the user ID attribute, and that can be translated in closure with this um, elegant expression: sets project joins of users, renaming um, the keys. In this case, we need that because if not, they're going to clash. Um, and the natural join that, which is the only kind of join that is supported in closure, will join on any attributes uh, that is common between the two relations. So since we have a type in both of them, but we don't want 
the join to happens on the type attribute, we are doing a renaming of that. And the results can be seen at the bottom. Um, so we are going to test this in a second. So I'm going to move on. There are also other helpers or things that are not maybe uh, set algebra or relation algebra things, but th that we tend to use, at least I tend to use quite, quite a bit. For example, rename keys is something that um, you tend to see um, in the wild quite often. And that is uh, renaming keys in a map uh, to something else based on the second map, which acts as a dictionary for the first one. So you can see the substitution of uh, uh, the, uh, the keyword A with uh, the string AA, for example. Map invert is taking values as keys and keys as values, creating a new map. So it's inverting them. And select keys is also very, very common. Um, you can just isolate uh, a specific portion of the attributes in a map, uh, returning a new map with just those attributes. Um, so what is in F set and uh, what is not in closure set that is in F set? So um, there are a few things that have been introduced as well. So it is replicating everything that is in closure set, uh, the algebra relations and the other category. And you can also see in parentheses um, the uh, speed improvements achieved by F set compared to closure set, the core set uh, library. So everywhere, like pretty good results, we go from like the 34% uh, of index, which I didn't explain what it is, but um, is related to joins, uh, to the 80% of subset and the superset. So everywhere is quite an interesting improvement. And it also contains uh, uh, an implementation of select keys. So some of the uh, some functions in the standard library, which is not which are not in closure set, have been re-implemented as well. Uh, the reason is that they are so connected; they are used inside closure set. It makes sense for them to be re-implemented to like a, like support the, the speed up. And then there are a few things that are only in that set. Uh, they might be useful or less useful to your use case. Uh, maps is probably something that you might see in the wild, and it. It is the, the problem that there is when you do um, a map over a set, transforming each element of the set, you don't receive back a set, you receive back a sequence, which is like, okay, most of the cases, unless you have to reuse that set in something else, which is set related. So this maps function is uh, transforming elements in the set and returning a set. And it's doing this in an efficient way. And then there are other things, I'm probably not going to go into the details of these um, in this presentation because I want to touch on other like higher level stuff. There are a few things that are brewing in F set uh, that I think that it might be interesting to introduce, which are again set functions, but higher level, like finding the power set, all the subsets of a set, the Cartesian product, so all the uh, combinations of the elements of the set and uh, the symmetric diff, which is um, uh, the union of the intersection. Or I'm gonna see that in the examples and why it might be useful. And uh, not in a set, maybe just worth mentioning uh, set or the set, hash set, disjoin and set, which are set related function that were not re-implemented, but are staying the same uh, from closure core in this case. Um, so I'm going to give you a, like a quick um, demo of what's available and how it works. So I'm going to start a REPL and get all this requires introduced. And so this is just to show you that um, I'm using difference as an example function. Um, the difference between the two set is removing all the common elements from the second set from the first set. I just wanted to show you that um, using the core set version of difference and using the F set version of difference is just the same. You just change uh, the namespace uh, and uh, it gets the same results. And this is the common theme for uh, F set. The idea is to create a dropping replacement as much as possible um, of closure set. Um, something more interesting that I was talking briefly touching before is the symmetric difference. 
So it's everything in the two sets except what is in their intersection. So let's have a look using um, core set to start with. So the symmetric difference, for example, of these two sets that you see below, uh, 1, 3, 5, 10, 2, 4, and 2, 4, 11 is 1, 3, 11, 5, 10. Um, so you can see that elements like 2 and 4, which are present in both sets, are not in the symmetric difference. And so what I wanted to show uh, here is like a going uh, a little benchmark with the uh, criterion and showing you um, some speed improvements, which are always useful. And so then I'm going to, when the, uh, the benchmark is done, I'm going to um, evaluate symmetric difference, exactly the same function, but I replaced all the occurrence of C set, which is core set, um, closure core set, uh, with F set, uh, the library. So we have uh, something in the order of, the, uh, you have to check the execution time in here, uh, in the order of 1.10 microseconds. So redefining the symmetric difference and testing again, doing another benchmark and see if we are able to do something better than this. So let me maximize so we can see both of them. And we have, yeah, in the order of 40%, um, maybe 30% speed up in this specific case, which is uh, uh, good to know. And as a final example, I wanted to show off uh, what I was talking about before regarding, um, oh, sorry, I wanted to maximize this, regarding relations instead. So we have exactly the same um, expression that we saw before to do this uh, uh, like SQL query-like expression between these two relations, users and accounts. So as before, I'm going to evaluate this and check if we can get better results. So we have the first version is using core set and I can show you what the result is. So we are sure that it's not messing up um, when we introduce F set and then we go with benchmarks and see how it goes. And as before, so we are um, in the order of the 16 microseconds. We are going to reevaluate Q again and try the benchmark again and see if we are doing good with that set and uh, relational algebra. So let's open up and here we are doing pretty good, I think. So we're going from 16 microseconds to six, which is more than 50% speed up. Um, considering that I just changed a letter, um, it's pretty good or pretty useful. And this is the quick demo I wanted to show you. Now in the next um, section of the presentation, I want to talk a little bit more about the work um, or my workflow, because maybe you have a, like a personal way of uh, introducing the same things. My personal workflow, when I need to work with speed, I need to work with improving performance. So I see it as like a double cycle with an inner one more like a frequent and faster and an outer cycle, which is um, uh, longer and slower. So the inner cycle in, in my case is having something that ensure correctness. So I'm not gonna change um, things for speed if I don't have a way to um, maintain the correctness of what I'm, uh, what I'm testing. So, so I can be sure that I'm not introducing bugs. Um, so tests or like uh, generative testing or other variants could be like end-to-end -end testing if you don't have um, other ways. The next step is to measure a baseline. So establish where we are starting from. And that's gonna be on my laptop, uh, my computer and today, uh, meaning that tomorrow I might restart the laptop and have same different results. What I'm, what I'm uh, uh, interested in is not the absolute numbers, I'm interested in the relative numbers, the 50%, 40% and so on. Absolute numbers is a completely different problem and um, it's also much more difficult to achieve, also because you need uh, to fix an environment and uh, it's not easy to fix that. So we're talking about relative numbers most of the time here. Um, introduce a single set of improvements. So this is similar to like uh, having like uh, short and uh, uh, self-contained commits to your code. So you know what kind of changes you're doing. And 
repeat from the top to see if you have a new baseline and establish a new one. Then when you're, you've done a few of these inner cycles, you might like arrive at the point where you don't have any more ideas that maybe that's the point where you go back to the outer cycle. The outer cycle would contain um, like a more, uh, a more in, like in-depth thoughts about the design and if you need to change it, so more drastic changes if in case, um, or use alternative data structure, use alternative changing the algorithm or changing things. And that is um, like uh, uh, something that will bring you again to another uh, round of inner cycles to like improve again on performance. Um, this is a little bit more in the in some details or some ideas of what goes into the inner cycle, but this list is by no mean a complete list and it, it is context dependent, it might change for you. And they are in sort of descending order of ugliness because the more you push for speed, the, the worse your code tends to, to be. So, um, well, unless you know you change the design, you find an absolutely like wonderful and elegant solution, and you go with that, and that will make maybe your code even better. But in the inner cycle, it tends to get worse as as more as you push. So, um, turn on the reflection warnings, fix them if you have any, because those are like uh, really really heavy on performance. They like they they can they can bring you an order of magnitude worse performance just because you have reflection warnings. Go trans transients if that's an option and it's an easy one normally. So something to, to look at first and also relatively elegant as well. And then we have several degrees into descending into Java. So call methods directly, uh, preferring type hints with interfaces when possible, not concrete implementations. Um, replace, reduce with loop iteration, other like ugliness, uglinesses like that. Um, you can go other ways as well. You can, uh, for example, if, if you have the problem of uh, um, calling your function with two or three arguments and sometimes with four and you only have RET2, then you want to avoid, um, if possible, um, to uh, use the var arg uh, RET for the function. So it's better you expand the set of RETs that you have available with two, three, four arguments even if that is duplicating the code a little bit or making it worse in terms of readability. Um, other tricks that might come to mind um, rely on specific input types. So you know that you can restrict uh, only to integers, for example, and like go with that with all the possible tricks that you know about integers, what you can do with them. And uh, uh, redefining hash code if you're using um, uh, your, if you have like parts of your code that are using um, hash maps or hash sets, like in our case, and you're spending a lot of time with hash codes, maybe you can, you know, uh, wrap them, wrap your elements in some box that re like uh, uh, override hash code and does it in a more, like a faster way. So these are like really ad hoc tricks that they really depends on what you're looking at uh, in your code. And some tools I want to mention, Criterion um, or similar, um, Criterion is my tool of choice. Uh, Visual VM, um, or again, equivalent uh, for explorative understanding, like where the hotspots are. Um, Java P, um, which is the uh, Java uh, reverse engineering. Um, so it, it can revert um, bytecode. Actually, it can spits out the bytecode from a Java class. So um, you understand what the bytecode is doing. And this is like a for low level understanding when you want to see how um, the, the virtual machine is spending your time and if you can see anything that could be improved there. So this is quite low level and you need to know also uh, quite extensively about the JVM, but sometimes that's the tool. Um, closure time is the other way around is uh, use sparingly is not precise, um, mainly for macro benchmarking, but if you have functions like or like uh, pieces of code taking seconds, then you can probably use time uh, to see, to, to like judge the first speed improvements. And end to end on, the, on your uh, real life project if possible, you know, it's gonna be uh, the, the last thing you do, but that is probably your goal. You want to see that the improvement you're doing in the small are having effects uh, percolating all the way up to the top. So, 
I wanted to show you now like um, what I just uh, explained in the like inner and outer cycle um, uh, with an example. So let's take union and uh, let's go through some of the steps that you could uh, you could do to make it faster. And you could you could consider this like a, a little snippet of code that you have in your code base that you want to prove, not necessarily closure.set. But this is like uh, uh, related to fset specifically. So this is our baseline. I just extracted the same closure set union, um, the RET2, which is one of the most important when you're unifying two sets. That's the most common thing you do. But let's concentrate on this. So the implementation is quite simple. Uh, you go reducing with conj, uh, starting from the smaller set, which uh, is going to bring you already like a good speed, just because you are this is already an, an optimization, but it's an algorithmic one. And it's also an obvious one to do. Um, when we start with this experiment, we are setting our baseline at 26 microsecond. The first thing that we can have a look at is that uh, one of the sets, one of the arguments is repeatedly mutated with conj. So the first thing that comes to mind, I think, is uh, going transients. And uh, uh, this is uh, a features offered by Clojure and uh, quite an elegant one as well. So your mutation, like your uh, uh, data structure becomes mutable, but it's all isolated inside your function. Nothing is coming to the outside and you don't, you don't even need to know. So this is uh, uh, something that you do in this specific uh, situation to improve speed and in an isolated environment inside a single function. So you can see that it's quite easy. You stick a transient into uh, the init set in this case and uh, uh, a bang um, after conj to declare that now conj is using the uh, transit version of conj and when you're done you return everything back to persistent and you can see that this is already giving us uh, some decent improvement we're going from 26 to 20 microseconds okay what can we do next and you can see that it's getting uglier uh, and less readable um, next thing that comes to mind is, uh, well, you know, union should be about set, not about vectors, not about maps. So can we assume that we are talking about sets and enforcing it? I think we can in this specific case. And if you're not using a set, you should be probably, um, you should be probably throwing an exception. And uh, if we do that, then we can access some of uh, the methods present on sets directly on the sets objects themselves. So, I mean, this is, it's got trade-offs. So it's not that you're just using Java interop, but you are uh, linking your code to a concrete implementation. Um, pretty sure the closure, like even in closure 2.0, um, won't change uh, how the interface of closure set is. So you can be like pretty sure about this interface will stay the same, but still you have to remember that you're making access to implementation details of how sets are implemented in Clojure. And uh, the results is also, I mean, for all this uh, noise that we are introducing, the result is not even that good. So uh, I would have thought maybe something better, but it's just shaving away another microsecond, not that much. What can we do next? Um, so we can look at that reduce. So I'm going back to union two. We still have an iteration done that reduce. So reduce is normally pretty fast. You don't need to look at that because it is implemented specifically by every, every uh, concrete collection type enclosure. But there are a few layers of polymorphic calls in order to arrive at that, like uh, please give me your iterator and now iterate yourself thing. So the idea is let's get rid of reduce and replacing it with a loop is also quite a mechanical operation. You know, uh, it could even be like a refactor move <laughs> in, uh, in some IDE um, because it's quite mechanical. You get the iterator from the collection. You have to ask if there are next items before you go and ask for the next one. And uh, um, the rest is pretty much the same. You recur into the loop and you keep uh, conjing into the set until you're done. And when you're done, you make it persistent and you come up 
again. Um, so this last version is um, making a good improvement again, like in the order of four microseconds or so. So now I arrived at Union 3, like uh, the third version of my like speed improvements. Um, try to think if you can see the next step, what would you, what would you do? Um, any guesses? Uh, so I'm not sure. So what I normally do in this case is, okay, I arrive at some point. I don't know exactly what could be uh, the offender now, if there is any. So what I do is fire up uh, the profiler and have a look. So this is Union 3 um, passing through the profiler and see where we are spending most of the time and see what the offenders are. And uh, the offender is uh, calculating uh, the hash equality when we conge elements into the set, which is like a relatively fast operation in normal circumstances. We're only looking at this as like an offender just because we, uh, we make it clear, we made it clear by doing all the other speed improvements. So this is the, our hotspot at the top at the moment. So is this something worth chasing? And that's you know, where we should probably stop and think about the next steps because probably what happens next at this point is you're gonna go for uh, drastic design changes or things that um, you know, are you know, restricting maybe on the types that you are introducing in the set. If you can do that, for example, you can, if you can restrict your sets to be integer sets only, then you have access to like the wonderful world of bitwise operations and you can have very fast um, operations on sets, but only if you have integers only. Um, what if you have other types? Can you restrict maybe to a subset of types for the set? If you can, then maybe you can wrap every item that goes into the set with um, like a box object that implements override hash code and give your version of hash code that is faster than the one that is provided by closure. And that's gonna be not an easy thing to achieve anyway. So all everything that I see after like Union 3 to make it faster is gonna be something drastic and a lot of work. So uh, there's kind of a trade-off you need to calculate at some point and see, is it really worth it for me to like to improve here or should I maybe look at another algorithms, another data structure and so on. So, and also some of these changes are defeating the purpose of uh, closure principles, right? You're gonna be doing mutable Java-like code um, that, uh, yeah, what's the point at that point, right? Well, why don't you write it in Java directly? So that's another option as well. I write it in Java, write it in C, and do native calls. So everything is possible, but uh, it requires some amount of effort. Uh, so lesson learned from this uh, speed up uh, exercise. Um, you might have compromise to do between generality and elegance and speed. Always measure. So that's the only way you can know if um, what you're doing is going in the right direction or not. Every single small step needs to be isolated. And unfortunately, sometimes one step uh, can have an effect on three steps before. So you need to like see if, uh, if you suspect that you need to remove the first step and see uh, if you achieve better results with like different combinations on, of uh, speed improvement steps, uh, which is tricky. Um, the, code, the code gets uh, clearly uh, uglier as quickly um, we, as, as much as, as, uh, as we push towards speed, um, improving, trying to improve speed. Um, when out of ideas, probably stare at the code, see if there is a different algorithm or fire up the profiler and see where you're wasting time. I think it's also a good thing to, like if there is a library doing that for you, um, it's probably good to delegate somebody else to do this kind of exercise for you. The library is going to be maintained, um, at least this is what I plan for that set, against uh, closure new versions or other changes perhaps in the JVM. So some effort can be done in a like focused way inside the library, instead of like spreading the same uh, speed improvements across. Um, the third like section of my presentation is, is going to show you a few experiments of plugging uh, FSET in some uh, widely used um, open source projects. So the criteria for me uh, here was to not spend 
a lot of time in doing the changes and measuring them. So I selected a few that have a dependency on closure set in some core part of, uh, of, of the project. And uh, also they provide a, a, like a benchmark uh, section or already made benchmark. So I don't need to understand how to benchmark something I don't know a lot about. So um, one candidate was a data script. Uh, which is, um, uh, well, uh, you can call it a data log in memory, sorry, in memory datomic implementation uh, with a data log interface as well. That also works in uh, Clojure script, so it works in the browser as well. And uh, I, there are a few data here regarding what version I've used, the SHA and so on, so it can be uh, replicated if I need to. Um, it's using closure set in a few critical sections. I think I identified that. And it comes with a handy set of benchmarks. So the verdict is promising speed up because you can see, especially in the query uh, part of the benchmarks, um, there's like a, a visible decrease of, um, uh, or, sorry, or improvement in, in the performance. So I'm not so sure at this point what we are looking at in terms of milliseconds or, something else seconds. Um, I, I, I wouldn't need to go back, but um, what probably is important is just to show that plugging in the library um, didn't give any issue and uh, uh, the, the, there is not a, like a decreasing performance. That, that's like good to see. Uh, it's uh, kind, of, kind of like uh, improving it. Um, and then it depends, of course, on the query you're doing with the data script. It could be like better for you or worse for you. Always measure, of course. Um, I also had a look a look at Crux, um, the database uh, from like the another, um, if you want, datomic competitor that um, is open source, uh, put together by uh, Juxt. Um, they also relying on a closure set, but mostly for the compilation part of um, the, the process, so compiling queries. Although I thought that given that the compilation of the query is still part of the API, so you're still like compiling your queries before you, you call, them, call them, so it's not part of a hot path, so to speak, but it's still interesting or useful. Um, I run, uh, with the help of the Crux team, I, I run specific uh, benchmarks that they made available for this and found that is uh, like giving a good improvement of some 30% like uh, speed up uh, in milliseconds for this specific test that is testing uh, query compilation and query execution. So um, they put like a ticket on the board to investigate possible adoption in the future of uh, that set. Um, finally, just to show like a, a, a less positive, on a less positive note, I tried on Riemann. Um, this gave something that looks like an improvement, but I consider this to be like inconclusive. I, I'm not sure 100% this is a, a good thing or not. Um, it would be nice, uh, so I thought about other projects that might be using closure set and, and do the same exercise. Uh, but I couldn't think of others, and it would be really nice if you have any mind uh, or you have your own projects with a hot path in Closure Set. Uh, if you're open source, I'll, I'll be happy to try it out. Uh, if they're not, you can try it out and let me know how it goes. And with this, we are going to toward the end of the presentation. So uh, just an appendix here to uh, tell you that apart from like uh, being uh, subject for improvements, Closure Set is also prone to silent uh, GIGO or GIGO, um, and that is an acronym for garbage in, garbage out, uh, which is um, uh, like you know a common acronym uh, for many closure functions. Which means that if the function is not uh, uh, specified to be compatible for some um, data type and you uh, insist on using that data type, then you might receive garbage out from the function. And the case for closure sets is probably a little bit more like dramatic just because it depends on the size of the, um, of the set and on the type of the set. So it could return a good result in one case. You can see the union there. 
um, is working okay in the first case is not working okay in the second because of that optimization that is iterating the smaller set or the bigger set depending um, on the operation and so if you forget or not don't know that you're passing something that is not a set you can get like really weird results and not realizing because it's not throwing and you can see a few of these examples here that, that should not return true or should not return an empty set here's a few to finish up um, some useful links um, the fset library is public is available uh, if you have any of these use cases please go enjoy let me know uh, fire up a few issues on the project and uh, we'll make it better and good if possible um, shameless plug on my book um, there's like a, a a chapter on sets covering um, many of the aspects of the functions in closure set that we uh, we saw tonight. Um, uh, there's also the slides of this talk that are available on uh, the FSET talk uh, project on my account, Reborg on GitHub. Um, you can go there if you want to download them. And feel free to get in touch uh, for questions or like uh, say hello. Uh, that's my email and Twitter handle. And finally, also like a plug for uh, supporting London Clojurians that is uh, uh, hosting me tonight. Um, uh, the, we, we, we briefly touched on this at the beginning of the talk when the, most of you were not present. So uh, we have an open collective, a London Clojurian account, which is accepting any uh, kind of donations, whatever you think is useful for Bruno to continue his uh, uh, wonderful work with the meetups or uh, to sustain Closure Bridge or to sustain uh, the Closure Conference we are putting together, Reclosure, um, please uh, head there and uh, help us out. And with this, we're done.